Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt Garvey. We are here to make comics and in today's video we are going to talk about comic scripts. And welcome back to the channel guys. Just want to say a big thank you to everyone for the love and support we have been getting for the channel so far. I really do appreciate it and I'm glad you guys are liking the videos. If this is your first time to the channel, don't forget to hit that like, share and subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. In today's video, we are going to be talking about comic scripts, so let's crack on, shall we? Okay, so comic scripting. Well, the good news is, is there's no actual wrong way to write a comic book script. But the bad news is, is there's no definitive right way to write a comic book script. And what I mean by this is, unlike, you know, writing a book or a play or writing for TV, there are no set rules when it comes to writing a comic book script. So basically what this means is as long as you can tell your story in a descriptive and coherent way that your artist collaborator can understand, that's all you need to do. So over the years I've seen scripts created in various different ways, but the two main ways that writers tend to lay their scripts out are most tend to do what's called full script, which is what I do and I'll be showing you that in a bit. But the second way is a style that's called Marvel Method. And the Marvel Method style was developed by Stan Lee and his artist collaborators back in the 60s. And instead of the more traditional full script approach, for Marvel Method, what the writer does is the writer will write an outline, a synopsis of the overall story. So there's no page by page play or dialogue or anything like that. It's literally just a one or two page outline. And then what they do is they give that to the artist. And then the artist goes away and draws the entire comic based on that outline. And then the writer comes back in, scripts the dialogue of the comic based on the comic pages that the art team have produced. If I'm honest, guys, I don't recommend writing your first comic scripts in the Marvel method. This style of writing was purely created out of necessity because back in the 60s, you know, along with his other responsibilities, Stan Lee just did not have the time to sit there and write 10 full scripts per month. So doing it this way puts a lot of pressure on your art team to deliver. And yeah, if you've got talented artists like Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko as your wingmen, yeah, you can totally trust your collaborators to take, you know, an outline and produce jaw-dropping stories. But if you're just starting out, I would tend to go the full script method, which I'm going to show you. But saying that, do writers still use the Marvel method? Does it work and is it effective? Yes. If I'm wrong, keep me honest in the comment section below, guys. But I'm pretty sure that Matt Fraction and David Ayer used the Marvel method in their seminal run on Hawkeye. And if you've not read My Life as a Weapon, go to your local comic shop and order it from them because it's awesome. So check that out. Anyway, so yeah, don't use Marvel method unless you're a seasoned professional. Instead, use the full script writing method, which is literally your comic broken down page by page, panel by panel, explaining what is happening in each panel along with characters' dialogue. Again, there are various different ways to do this and I'll show you how I write mine in the next video, but on the screen you can see a quick example of one of my scripts. The reason I'm going to deep dive into how I write my scripts in the next video is because before we can actually write a script, we need to understand what actually goes into a script. So guys, I'm literally going to take this all the way back to basics because even though some of you probably know most of this, others might not and we all have to start somewhere, so stay with me. Okay, so I'm going to dial this back to absolute basics. And the reason why I'm doing this is because some of you are beginners. You may not know what some of this terminology means. And you know what? There is no shame in not knowing this stuff. Because if you haven't read about it or someone hasn't told you, you are not going to know it. So if I go through this, hopefully you'll have a better understanding. So if someone you know, further down the line says to you, you know, how big do you want the gutters on the page or where do you want the caption boxes to be, you are going to know what those phrases mean, okay? Okay, so other than the comic panels, what other information do we need to know about the comic page? Well, for starters, those of you that don't know, these blank areas that we have between each comic book panel these are known as gutters. So the purpose of the gutter is to not only break up the actual artwork into individual images, but it's actually used to show a passage of time. So if you use these two panels, for example, in the top panel, the character is facing forward, but then in the next panel, he's looking back. We haven't shown the character turn around slowly like you would in the film. So this is the equivalent of showing a cut in a film. So it is a passing of time. And this could be used in any number of different ways and it's a really clever way to which I'm going to show you in another video. But I just wanted to explain what a gutter is and what its purpose is. So let's go through what actually is in a comic book panel. Let's use this one for an example. So what do we have in this comic panel? Well, straight away we have the action. Which is what we're going to be describing in our comic scripts 
when we get to that. So in this panel, you can see this character is looking at this smoke. So that's going to be our description when we come to writing our script. But what else do we have? Well, as well as the actual description, we're going to have a speech bubble. And within that speech bubble, we're going to have our dialogue. But as well as that, we also have a caption box. Now, a caption box has many different uses in comics. It can be used to give the reader information like a time, a day, a place. A caption box can be used to continue dialogue that goes from one panel into another if the character that was speaking in the previous panel is not in the next one. But the most common usage for a caption box nowadays is it's an actual replacement for thought bubbles. You know, in comics back in, you know, the 60s and 70s, you know, you'd have Spider-Man on a rooftop and he'd be thinking to himself and you'd see little bubbles, you know, popping out of his head and you'd read his thoughts. But nowadays, most comics tend to have these in caption boxes for readers. OK, so what are the basic panels that we need to know about before we start writing our script? Well, the first one is a splash page. A splash page is a single panel that takes up the entirety of a page and is usually used for an action scene or a big reveal. Okay, so the second panel description you need to know about is the double splash page. The difference between this splash page and the one before is the double splash page actually covers two pages. So when you open a comic, it's a splash page that covers both pages. And the problem with this is you need to know where you can put these pages. So what I've done is I've created this document that I've shared on Twitter a few times and not only does it show you where your page turns are like it does on your plot, but it also shows you where you can put your splash pages to and I've put a copy of this in the Google Drive so you can download a copy of this as well. Okay, so the next panel we need to know about is the establishing panel. The point of the establishing panel is it's set in the location of your comic or a specific scene within your comic. So looking at the example on the screen, we can see that these two panels are currently set on this space station. So if we stay on this page for just one second, you can see that these two lower panels are actually set within the larger image of the above panel. And these are what's called inset panels, and they're used to reinforce that the, what's happening in these two panels is happening above us in this location. Another great example and an incredibly clever way that inset panels can be used in comics is from that Hawkeye comic that I mentioned earlier by Matt Fraction and David Ayer. And if you look at our two main characters here, they're at a black tie event and all of the background guests are not moving. Yet our characters are moving within the scene, within panels, within the panel. So that's incredibly clever storytelling. Next up we have is the close-up. There's one and there's two. Why do we use close-ups? Close-ups are great if you want to have characters talking back and forth, but another really good use of a close-up is if you want to show more emotion on a character's face. So if a character's angry, scared, happy, close-ups are a great way to get that across to the readers. And along with the close-up, we also have the extreme close-up, which obviously is focusing on a tiny, tiny detail within a person's face or an inanimate object to really emphasize something. Next up, we have the medium panel, which is usually single character shown from the waist up and again is usually used for when someone's talking. And next up, we have the full panel, which shows a character from head to toe, or in this case, two characters. Next up, we have the wide panel. A wide panel like an establishing panel is very good if you want to set a location or a setting within your comic, but it's also very good if you want to have several different characters in one panel at the same time and then there's a lot of dialogue going on. Next up, we have our profile panel. And as you can see, a profile panel is a character or two characters sideways on showing their profile. And these panels are really good if you want to have characters talking back and forth. And next up, we have one of my absolute favorite panels, which is the Worm's Eye View which I think the name speaks for itself. It's us, as the reader, looking up at the action as if we were a worm on the ground. And these are really good for dramatic scenes, for scary scenes, or if you want to look someone look huge and heroic. On the flip side of that, we've had the worm's eye view. We can also have the bird's eye view, looking down on a scene as if we were a bird in the sky. And last but not least, we have the POV panel which I'm sure you know stands for point of view. So this is us writing a panel as if we were the eyes of the character that we're writing. So it's great if a character wants to say, look at their own hands, but it's also really good if you want to have a character spying on another character because we're looking through their eyes. 
Okay, so that's all the panel descriptions that I wanted to share with you guys today. I know there are more out there, um, but I, as I said, I just wanted to give a basic overview for the beginners that are out there. So if they do want to have a practice and start practicing their scripts now, at least they have a better understanding of what kind of panels that they should be writing. If you do want to get a bit more in depth and a bit more creative, I suggest Googling Wally Wood's 22 panels that always work. For those of you who don't know who Wallywood is, he's a very famous comic book artist and he's really well known for creating this document that takes boring comic book panels and making them into more interesting ones. So it's well worth Googling this, keeping a copy of it and using it when you're writing the descriptions. And that's another video done guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you found that useful and interesting. In the very next video, I'm gonna finally show you how we turn that plot that we made last week into an actual comic script. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss out on that video. Also, just before I go, I just want to ask you guys one quick question. Um, a couple of really nice people have mentioned that the audio on my videos when I'm doing this bit has not been that great, which is a huge faux pas on my part. I think I've cracked the code because I was using my microphone in the wrong way, if you can believe it. I have this Blue Yeti microphone, and as you can see, it looks like this. And automatically, I thought I meant to have it like this which apparently is the wrong way to do it. So I've been speaking into the wrong part of the microphone um, and now it looks like this and I've been told that I need to speak into this part. And so hopefully this will improve that. So in the comments, if you could just let me know if it's better or worse or the same, that would really appreciate, I would really appreciate it. So that's it. So thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video. And remember if I can make comics, anyone can.